Indy cars are ready to begin their 17 race series with a new venue in Miami. On pole is Michael Andretti. He's back with Newman Haas Racing. That's the team he won the championship with in 1991. And then there's the story of Mauricio Guzelmin. His engine failed him in morning warm-up. He didn't turn a lap. We'll keep an eye on him. Raul Bostal is looking very strong in his new Ray Hall Hogan Mercedes entry for 1995. And also Gil de Ferran coming over from Europe, driving for the Jim Hall team, had one incident in the qualifying session, but is looking very strong. And then there's the story of Christian Fittipaldi, who out-qualified his world champion uncle. We'll be back with a start right after this. So much happening here as they are on the parade lap. The pole sitter is Michael Andretti. He returns to Newman Haas Racing, where he won a title in 91. Second quick outside of the front row is Mauricio Guzelmin. He moves over to Pac West after leaving Ganassi. In the second row, on the inside, the 11 car of Raul Boisel. This year, he is a teammate to Bobby Rahal. Outside of row two is Gilles de Ferran, the fastest of the four first-time starters. In row three, that's the Ferran. There's Paul Tracy inside of row three. The red and white Newman Haas car is distinctly different from his teammates. And Danny Sullivan will start outside row three, the number 17 car, returning after a year's layoff from the Indy cars. In the fourth row, that 15 car is Christian Fittipaldi, Emerson's nephew, making his Indy car debut. And Jacques Villeneuve, the number 27 that's so identified with his father, now adorns his car. In row five, Al Unser Jr. carrying the number one of the defending IndyCar champion. And Scott Pruitt returns to IndyCars after sending last year developing the new Firestone tire. In row six on the inside is Bobby Rahal. Familiar colors, the three-time series champions, though is this year using the Mercedes power plant. The outside of row number six is Jimmy Vassar. The yellow rollover bar will help you identify this car and separate it from his teammate Brian Herta. In row seven, number 16 is Stefan Johansson. Robbie Gordon is in car number five. The major change here is from a Lola chassis to a Renard for 95. In row eight, Andre Ribeiro, a new team, a new driver to IndyCar, and the only Honda engine in the field. That brightly colored car, nice bright yellow front. And Emerson Fittipaldi, the team, the sponsor, and even the number remain the same as in 94. Row nine, Adrian Fernandez and Teo Fabi. The 10th row, Alessandro Zampedri and Brian Herta. In row 11, Christian Danner and Eddie Cheever. Row 12, Alessio Salazar and Eric Bachelor. 13 is Hiro Matsushita and Dean Hall. And alone in the 14th and final row is Dennis Vitolo. This track here is 1.829 miles around as they gather up behind the PPG pace car and are very close to starting this season. There it is. Keep a close eye on turn two and turn 12. We've seen a lot of action there this weekend. Notice, too, that the pits here are curved. Now they begin to slow the field down and bunch it up as they head into the final corner. Pace car is off onto the pit road. Front row nicely aligned. As Michael Andretti takes the green flag, jumps into the lead, Guzelman to the second. Wassell comes up on the inside, Deferrin to the outside. Perfect start. Now they head down the very fastest part of the track. All safely through the first turn. Now on to Biscayne Boulevard. Up toward 185 miles an hour. On board with Ray Hall. That's Scott Bruin just ahead as he smokes the tires under braking. This is the major part right there at the Jacquet. We've got to watch it all day. Braking is what's going to be the answer there. Nobody can give it up. That's where you see the tires smoke a little bit. Michael Andretti, car number six, begins to pull away. He's been absent from the Newman Haas team for two years. Now he's back, and he resumes just where he left off in the lead. That second place car is Mauricio Guzman. The yellow car is Dee Ferran. And that's Paul Tracy. Sitting back, he's managed to get around. Raul Boisel, you now ride with Paul Tracy. Now he's also the teammate to Michael. That's both the Carl Haas teams, and their cars are identical. The paint jobs are a little bit different, Paul. What Tracy has to avoid is an accident. He's accident prone, and he needs to get off to a good start this year with no crashes. Michael Andretti leads the first lap. Remember, he did that a year ago at Australia, went on to win the race. 
Taking the first lap honors away from Nigel Mansell, the pole sitter. A lot of these guys, like I said in the opening, have had problems during practice. There it goes through the chicane again. And a lot of them are being careful now. You see they're getting spread out. Look at right here how far the cars are. Whoa, oh. car into the wall. Car brushed the barrier back there. Looks like it might have been the car running in. It's Paul Tracy. Car was running in fourth place. I guess I spoke too early on that one. Paul Tracy had three accidents in practice. He had to get his season started with a new team proving that he could not, that he could get through races without crashing. This is a terrible beginning for Paul Tracy. So for the moment, the local yellow flag only affecting that section of the race course as young Paul in his first race for his new team is out quite quickly. So Paul Tracy walks away. The field continues to race on the rest of the circuit and now full course caution comes out. So they'll put out the pace car and slow the field while they get Paul Tracy's wrecked car off of the edge of the race course. We're under our first caution of the season here in Miami. We're live in Miami, a full course caution underway. An incident started when the third place car of Paul Tracy brushed the wall. He was battling with Jill DeFerran. Now, here it is, watch, he goes to the right side first. Now he's gonna go down a long straightaway and keep up the speed, he's just getting started now. And he'll lock, will be going into the chicane. Now watch, he'll start braking right here. The steam breaking, he locks the brakes momentarily, hits the left side, hits the right side, just absolutely drove right into the, both of the walls. Of course, the left one threw him into the right one. Here's a view from the holiday, the third car in the frame, the red and white one, right there comes in, boom, hits the left one, that threw him to the right. He really didn't have any steering, Paul, by the time he got to the right side. But that's Paul Tracy's fault. He drove right into the wall. Watch this on the left top, boom, right there. You can see his head lunge forward. He goes over and hits the right wall. That's the reason we saw both tires on both sides of the cars all what, bent up. What caused it, Bobby? It was the driver's mistake. He just simply tried to straighten out the chicane too straight, and you can't do that. As you saw from the helicopter view, Danny Sullivan was right behind him and almost collected Paul when he came off of the wall. Coming into this race, there was every reason to think that Paul would be a good rival for his new teammate, Michael Andretti, and that they'd battle it out all season if Paul could overcome his tendency to make mistakes. It was mistakes that crippled him last year and it conceivably led to his being released from Penske. Now, of course, he continues where he left off with mistakes. Beautiful view here. That's the road that so many have taken to the Port of Miami, where the cruise ships are docked. You can see them there in the background. Shows you how truly picturesque this wonderful circuit is. And Ralph Sanchez and his Miami Motorsports Group have done a marvelous job putting this event together. Matter of fact, there are a whole series of yachts that are on the shoreline right along the edge of the racetrack here. So we are under full course caution. Four laps have been scored into the record book. Michael Andretti started on the pole and led the early laps until this, actually the early lap and a half, until this incident involving Paul Tracy. Now this turn right here, I want to explain this real quick. Those red things that you see on your screen are actually water barriers. And they're made for safety, like if you hit those things, they're full of water and it absorbs the shock an awful lot. Robbie Gordon started 14th, moved up to 10th in just one lap. Let's go to Jack Aroon. Well, Paul, one of the things we have to look at with a new facility is the fact that what are the fuel windows? And everybody's telling us that the window could start under a full course caution as early as lap 18. If that's the case, you see this OP on these Goodyear tires in Robbie Gordon's pit? He scuffed in the optional tire, that's what it stands for, and was the quickest car in most of the practice session this morning. It's a harder compound than what they qualified on. So what the team has done is they've taken the OP, the optional tires, put them on the wall. They are assuming that this race will have a lot of cautions and they will stay out as long as they can after they duck in around lap 18 and take on the harder compound tire. So with the tires here, Bobby, we're gonna see a lot of interesting strategy. Yes, for sure. And another thing you wanna remember about that is that the cars have to start. Now you wonder why did he just go ahead and start with those hard ones? They have to start the same thing they qualified on. Everybody that I know of went with the soft tires for qualifying, Paul. The harder tire, of course, is a little slower, but has better law, uh, life. We see Paul Tracy walking back. 
I wonder what could be going through his mind now because obviously he's going to have to explain to his new team, to Carl Haas, to Paul Newman, to his mechanics, that Sam, he's gotten off to a bad start. Sam, that's the fourth wreck or incident that Paul has had this weekend. He's just not getting along with his racetrack too good. And historically, it's typical of him to start a season in the hole. He started with a 16th last year, and he's big trouble. If you guys are both former drivers. What does that do to the psyche? Here's a guy that has already had a, a number of crashes, not only this season, but before. What is that going to do to him? Well, that's bad, and the reason is, is he just left the He was with Penske last year. He wrecked a lot of cars for Roger Penske. There's talk that that's the reason he got released. Let's go pit side and Gary Gerald. Paul, keep an eye on the defending series champion, Al Unser Jr. He started back here at near mid-pack. They've reported a possible electrical problem. They thought about bringing him in. Roger Penske just made the decision no. He told him to stay on the track. So Junior's out there. We don't know if they've got gremlins. It's been a frustrating weekend for this team in a bid to open up a chance to defend that championship title. Well, the pace begins to pick up as they come single file behind the PPG pace car. Michael Andretti leading them around, and we should head back toward a green flag just two turns from now. Great view back from Michael's car. The car right behind Michael, the multicolored car, Mauricio Guzman, a former Formula One driver who's really finding his way now in IndyCar ranks. Guzman had trouble with his engine in the morning warm-up, barely got out at all, but obviously whatever that problem was, they got it fixed. But look at the Farron right behind him, beginning to close in, battle developing for second place. Yeah, the yellow Pennzoil car, we haven't seen that car run this good in a long time. And Fabi, who has been with the Pennzoil car for a long time, is in a different car. And who's winning the battle? Dee Ferrer in it. The first time he's been in IndyCar racing. In the back of the field, a number of cars now beginning to string past Eric Bachelard, the 19th car back there including Ray Hall, who's running back in 10th in that black and yellow car. Here we see the multicolored car of Christian Fittipaldi, third in line here, new to this kind of racing, but not new to racing. He's Emerson's nephew. He's had some top finishes in Formula One. I think he's going to make a very big impression on IndyCar. Christian Fittipaldi currently running in fifth place. Strange with a name like Fittipaldi to see the three stripes of a rookie on the back of the car, but of course he is here in IndyCar. He Let's talked. go to Jack Aroot. Well, Paul Tracy has walked his way back to the entrance of Pit Road. What happened, Paul? Uh, it's just disgusted, really. You know, I've just I've had brake troubles all weekend, and just the rear tires locked up, and I couldn't stop. And it was either you know go through the tried to tried to cut it through the turn, but just hit the wall. So it's just a bad start to another year, I guess. So. Seems like this cloud has been over your head for the last couple of years. How are you going to shake it? I don't know. I just try to have a good race and uh, have a good race for the Budweiser guys in Kmart in, in Australia, and uh, you know, we'll move on to the next one. Good luck, Paul. And look at the Pennzoil car, the number eight car. That's DeFerrin as somebody lights up the brakes big time coming into the corner. He's been falling steadily backwards after a great start and running up to third place. Now anytime we see a lot of cars going into the chicane, together like this or 